Uh, this talk is about the badge that some of you have hanging around your neck, some of you have in a bag, some of you chuck them into the lake, whatever. Um, and we started this project over a year ago. Um, actually, I think we started talking about it at the previous EMF, so it might be two years ago now. Um, and the, all the people on stage have in some way been involved in this project. There's actually quite a few more who've been involved as well, but not everyone's here, not everyone can make it. Um, and we're going to talk about what happened, uh, why it doesn't quite work as it should, uh, why bits of it work better than they should do, and everyone who's been involved. So I think Matt's going to start, who's over on the end, wearing every version of the badge that we have, um, <laughs> including the one that only he has. There's only one that exists. I think he should put it on eBay. Anyway, uh, Matt, off you go. I've got one. Thank you. Um, do you want to pass that to Bob? So we're going to wing this panel style a bit, back and forth. And there's lots of little anecdotes and stories along the way. So we're going to try and get them all out. Um, so yes, trials and tribulations of a badge project. Um, there are a bunch of alternative titles for this talk, um, which we went through on IRC. So why are badges are way cooler than yours? Every badge we designed this year, and that's not just these, there's a couple of others as well. Um, why making these silly ballet badges nearly killed us? Um, why you don't currently have a badge? That was our backup. <laughs> <laughs> so, project management. I'll let Bob take over for a bit. So yeah, this is when the project was going fairly well. We started April 2013. We had loads of time, it was brilliant. We started designing hardware. Fantastic, January this year. We had a working badge prototype. It's like, yes, look how ahead of time we are. And then we realized, yes, it is the original prototype. Look, it's pretty cool. There's one, I'll show you in a second. <laughs> it's Arduino Duo. It's, it's nice and fast, it's ARM-based. It had an e-ink display. Wow, brilliant, don't need power. IMU, you could turn it around, it'd do all sorts of fancy stuff. Batteries and a charging circuit that actually worked. <laughs> Great. So look. Here's some pictures of it. It's got all sorts of cool stuff on it. That's really out of focus. Um, yeah. Uh, Repaper display, they're really nice. We couldn't get that, it was really expensive. Um, yeah, pretty stuff. That's good. Then, of course, we realize, oh, we don't have any money. Um, the badges, are don't, they don't come from the EMF ticket price. They're kind of entirely sponsored, so um, John Z then sort of spent a while getting sponsorship. It was great. Uh, yeah. John Z, yes. Um, getting all sponsorship really hard. So, yeah. Um, when we first started out with this, and he, he mentioned the e paper display, and we thought, cool e paper, this is awesome. This is down to one person at, at 2012. And I don't know who it was, but whoever you are, you owe me a beer, because they said, what, what do you want on the badge next time? And they go, oh, aim for the moon, put e-paper on it. You can't get e-paper. And at the time, you could not get e-paper. This was not a thing you could buy. Um, so we sort of, we joked about that for a little while. And then I found that we could get e-paper. I thought, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And we managed to get a discount from the manufacturer. We managed to get the suppliers and everything. It was all going really well. And we've got prototypes. And we've got loads of e-paper displays, all of which are still in my flat. Um, uh, I've got some for sale, if anyone would like any. Um, and... Uh, it all was going pretty well. And we even found a sponsor to cover it all. And a sponsor to cover the whole thing, it was all completely fine. Um, but as with many things with sponsors, after a while we'd, we'd spoken to them and they were like, actually, we've just realized we actually spent nearly all that money. We can give you a little bit of money, but not quite nearly as much as we thought. And what they meant was maybe like 10%. So that was fine. So we went off to try and find another sponsor. and. Uh, that was a while again. And we found another sponsor. And they were like, yeah, we can do it. This is going to be great. We're totally going to do this. And then they came back to us like, actually, yeah, we can give you more like 5%. And, um, uh, and th at this point, um, I was pretty much having a nervous breakdown because we were doing the event and all of this at the same time. And then it got quite bad. Um, and all of this time, we weren't sure whether, uh, how much money we were going to get. We didn't want to deliver anything that we were we'll trying to deliver anything we couldn't actually get the money for. Um, so we started looking for smaller sponsors, and we started talking to people we knew and companies that were involved and people who could help get involved. Uh, and it became pretty obvious that we needed to drop our budget a bit. Um, so we dropped the e-paper display, sorry. Um, and 
that we kept going and eventually we managed to close, I think it's like 15 sponsors, maybe a bit more than that, all of whom put a little bit of cash in to help with the project and all of whom helped uh, get the thing made. Um, but we waited and we waited and we waited and we waited to see how much money we could actually get to build this thing for everyone. Um, so we didn't go bust. And because of that, the project got put later and later and later until Matt and Bob were basically freaking out 24-7. It was brilliant. Um, it, was, it was to watch, not for them. But you know, it's, uh, yeah, last, last Make Affair this year in March, I think it was, we sat down, no, April. Uh, I don't remember. April. Yeah. No, it was April. It was April. Yeah. We sat down and basically we took the budget and the list of parts and just said, all right, we'll take that off, we'll take that off, we'll take that off and squeeze the cost of the badge right the way down um, to sort of like somewhere like, and then it's like, right, yeah, okay. We need an LCD screen. Yeah, so we got, we got the screen back on. And the thing that about this is really annoying is that we actually put everything back on the badge anyway. Yeah. Absolutely everything except we'll the paper screen. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so it was a wasted few months of work to get all that done. But you know, it got done in the end anyway. Um, but the sponsors that we ended up getting helping out now, we're going to talk about Ragworm a bit later because they ended up uh, moving mountains to get this done for us. Um, but all of these sponsors are on the screen that you probably can't even see. Can you see that? You probably see the side screens. Um, so, PayPal and Element 14 dropped in and just immediately helped out. They were great. Uh, and then slowly went around all the little sponsors and everyone we knew to try and get a little bit more cash out of them and everyone squeezed out a little bit. Uh, actually, MathWorks were amazing as well. Um, they were really good. Uh, it's everyone has been fantastic help, helping out with this. So I don't know how many sponsors are actually in here at the moment, but thank you very much for helping out with this. It, it, otherwise, we've got two of them on stage. Us. Pardon? We've got two on stage. We have got two on stage. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> He's smelling at 14. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and, uh, yeah, and stated in Ragworm, hence the lovely orange wellies. There is a story about why your badges are red and not orange at some point, which I'm going to let her tell you, along with many others. Um, uh, and I think with, with the sponsorship, anyway, it all had been closed and all sorted out, but it, it pushed everything back, so the manufacturing was delayed. Um, we yeah. didn't want to write software for it for a platform that might not actually exist as it was, so we had a rough idea what was going on, but we didn't want to push it. Um, we didn't want to write something and have to bid it all. So I think Bob and Matt will now explain exactly what happened next. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on, next slide. Yeah, so we finally got money. Uh, we finally settled on an LCD screen, started redesigning the board, and yeah, about six weeks ago. Was it correct that long ago? Was that when we did the version two? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's um, <coughs> Can you move the thing a bit closer? Yeah. How's that? Um, <coughs> let me just switch my other notes. <laughs> Yes, uh, around the Maker Fair, we got Element 14 and Ragworm stepped in and said, we can help with the boards, we can help with the costs, we can help with the parts. Element 14 is great. We were able to get all, half the parts through them, uh, through Farnow. Um, yes, so we were, <laughs> the version two prototype, we, uh, Mark found an LCD screen on Ali. Um, I got a couple of samples sent over and I'd got the data sheet and redesigned the badge, took out all the e-paper stuff and a load of stuff I couldn't afford, put this, um, put the LCDs back in, um, sent the boards off to Ragworm to have three new prototypes for the version two made. Um, um, yeah, we, yeah, we were having problems getting, we tried getting the screens going in the screen library, um, got the boards back and realised I'd wired the screen the wrong way around. <laughs> I got pin one and 40 mixed up and all the connectors in the wrong place. So I had to put the screens in back to front. Uh, and, um, and they still didn't work. And they still didn't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I talk to you about this because I was... Yeah, go on. So, so the screens are a chipset that's fairly common and uh, an Adafruit cell, a screen that is <laughs> the, almost the same chipset. And so I had, I'd got one of these screens and I'd got it all working and I found a library and it was all great and then we got the real screen uh, and it didn't work and it just didn't work and we were, I was looking at it, looking at it, looking at it and eventually got to the point where I was like, well, we're sure we're going to make it work because, you know, they, they, they do work, you know, but we had to make the order for 1500 screens it was the deadline and we still hadn't made it work so we just 
went, well, we've had so much bad luck already, we've got to go our way once. <laughs> and eventually, um, I say, about, I think it was two, two days after we put the order in it and be confirmed, I got the screen working. And it was really stupid. Every other screen, you select it and reset it. This one, you must not select it to reset it. Who knew? <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so that was that was um that was that was pretty much when I got involved in the project as well to do screen things. Um so yeah. Um do you want to carry on with uh, part sourcing? Part yeah. Yeah, part sourcing is a good one. So um <coughs> electronic parts take a very long time to be manufactured and arrived. Some of the stuff on this board has 13 to 16 week lead times. So we set a timeline plan out way back, like at January, and it was like, we wanted everything done and dusted two months before the event, sat in Johnny's flat, um, which meant we had- We started actually building the thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got graphs of like when this was, and it's great. Uh, um, yeah, and so some of the parts, I basically, in order to hit that timeline, some of the parts I needed to order in like March, which was when we were still losing sponsors. Um, so yes, that was fun. Thankfully, I managed to, uh, I work for Sissico. We deal with some big suppliers. So one of the really wor the worst ones is the, the processor. Um, getting hold of one and a half thousand processors is quite fun. Um, it's quite hard, especially when you say, yes, I can't wait for the 13 week lead time. Thankfully, they'd got one and a half thousand in, I got 1,900 in stock and I said, can I pre-order these and allocate them um, so that I can have them delivered at some point in the future because we still weren't sure we were going to have enough money so it was like I need to put these on order but I might not actually be able to afford them we might not have a badge so we might have to cancel this order um, and so the, the sales guy um, was like yeah I can confirm it with my boss and we should be able to get you a sale or return on these things he kept confirmation three days later um, and they pre-allocated me the stock but they only pre-allocated 800 because the others that were in stock had already gone out by this time. So it was like, yeah, um, about, four, about a month before we started um, getting towards uh, ragworm and manufacturing. As, uh, I think that happened around this time. So once they'd ordered these chips, this was a thing that had happened. But, you know, it was done, it was ordered, it wasn't a problem. Um, and all this time, I've been trying to talk to the manufacturer of the components to get discounts, to get free ones, and all that <laughs> kind of thing. And, um, I finally, after talking at Element 14, went through three other people in the director of the Raspberry Pi Foundation and got me introduced to someone at Atmel who would actually respond to my phone calls, which took a really long time. And they immediately went, yeah, yeah, we'll sponsor, this is great, we'll give you all the chips. I'm like, cool, we've already bought them. And <laughs> I was using them as a footrest. <laughs> they, yeah, uh, yeah, he'd been using it as a footrest by this point. And then they just were like, um, well, yeah, we can't really do anything. Bye. And then just <laughs> <laughs> Great, so now we're stuffed in two different ways. This is really great. Um, and it, it all got resolved, but and I think they are sponsoring in the future, hopefully. But with all of these things, it's, it, it's been finding the right person to talk to at the companies to get it sorted out, and it's taken a really long time. Um, I, uh, with the e-paper displays and back when we were doing that, finding anyone who would talk to us was just an absolute nightmare. Um, finding anyone who would talk to us about manufacturing boards and things until we found Ragworm was, again, an equal nightmare. Um, so it's nice that some of the companies will come out and talk to us about things occasionally and, well, it, they're all on site, so hopefully they're nice people. Anyway, yeah, uh, carry on. Yes, fine, now we're great with this. So getting all the parts through those, it was nice and easy. It's like, here you go, here's a bill of materials, get me all of these, and they put it all on order. The fun stuff from China. Uh, <laughs> AliExpress is an absolute nightmare to deal with. Um, and so there are three of the parts that have got little anecdotal stories to them. Um, Mark. Do you want to talk about the LCDs and ordering those? Yeah, the, I mean, the, the LCDs were reasonably easy compared with, with some of the stuff. Um, I, got, I got in, the, the company we got them from is actually a fairly small outfit. There's only about six staff, as far as I can tell, and only one sales start, staff. Um, so I got very used to speaking to Alice on Skype at five in the morning. Um, she's very fond of saying, yes, dear, uh, <laughs> to all my questions, even, even without checking anything. Uh, she's like, yes, dear, that'll be no problem. Uh, and then uh, you sort of left wondering whether there's any, anything really behind that. Um, 
So we, we sent in the order um, and uh, with a delivery. They were meant to be dispatched after 35 days. And on the 35th day, um, she popped up on Skype. So I asked her, you know, are these ready to ship? And she said, we've had no power for seven days. Uh, we might be a little bit late. Um, and yeah, because they're, they're based in Shenzhen and there's all sorts of, uh, you know, stuff going on there. Bu new buildings being built and massive expansion of, of factories and stuff. And uh, they're only in a tiny little neighborhood somewhere quite a way away from the center. And... Uh, so yeah, they, they, they'd been completely out of, out of uh, action for a week. Um, so things were completely hectic on their side, uh, and they did manage to get them shipped in time to arrive in London in my office so that I could then take them to the field. However, when they turned up in my office, uh, it was meant to come in four boxes. Uh, three of the boxes arrived, uh, opened them all up, they all looked fine. Fourth one was a slightly different shape. Uh, and when I looked on the side, it was addressed to um, uh, an aerospace company in Birmingham, which sort of worried me a little bit. Um, I opened it up, and the uh, dispatch note said that it was uh, £100,000 worth of uh, aircraft controller. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I was quite tempted to hold on to it and uh, yeah. uh, e you that, know, it would sponsor the next badge or three. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so we sent that back and uh, I explained the situation to FedEx who, were, who very helpfully said that they would send a, you know, they'd stop the delivery and get a courier, send it over that night and I didn't hear anything and then we had to go onto the field and still hadn't heard anything, this was a week later. Um, and uh, when I finally phoned them up, they said, uh, yeah, we've been phoning them all the time and uh, in fact, I've, just in the last hour, I've left two voicemail messages on their answering phone, and I will be chasing them all the way through my, you know, through the next hour. So I thought I'd phone up the company themselves. Turns out they don't have an answering phone; they've got a switchboard. Um, and when I spoke to Goods Inwards, they'd heard absolutely nothing. So, <laughs> uh, and they were they were desperate to get rid of them themselves. Um, so uh, we finally managed to convince FedEx that it was their fault and ship the. Uh, the, the, box, the last batch of bo uh, box of LCDs to the field uh, and they arrived on I think Thursday night or something <laughs> just in time to be soldered with all the other components which also arrived in the last 24 hours uh, th Thursday night is not the latest that things arrived <laughs> 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 um, but yes we all, you know, there were other, other things the other guys were tearing their hair about, uh, about other things in the meantime uh, who, was, who was dealing with batteries is that you? Um, yeah, that was me. So, ordering the batteries, um, the original supply that we were looking at and the original battery um, we priced on way back. It's like we come around to, right, right, it's time to order the batteries and, oh, they no longer have that battery. Um, so, we need to go and find another one. So, we went and found another one. And Bob found another battery and it was like, <coughs> right, the, uh, and, and Bob had asked uh, Russ to do, because Russ has done a lot of the ordering, Bob asked Russ to order the batteries and it's like, I'm like, eh, okay, I thought they're done with and I wasn't worrying about them. And about three days later, it's like, Russ, did you order the batteries? No, what batteries? <laughs> anyway, so I went ahead uh, and I got in touch with the seller and I ordered the batteries. And they were like, yeah, okay, we can do one and a half thousand batteries for you and we can get you them delivered to you for the, in a couple of weeks. Um, this was four weeks ago. <laughs> four weeks ago, yeah. Um, <coughs> And they were supposed to go to London, and they were supposed to get and, and be there and ready and waiting for us. Um, and then the fun and game started. <laughs> so they were like, okay, it's going to take us a little while to pa pack these because we have to pack them in special boxes to ship them through checking. Uh, and the post office told them that they need to pack them like such and such. It was two in a box so they could send them. So they packed them in two in a box. This is in the factory in China. Packed up the batteries, two in a box, sent them over to Hong Kong where they're checked and then would be sent over via TNT to a here in the UK. Hong Kong checking turned around and said, nope, you need to repack them. So the factory in China paid for someone in Hong Kong to repack the, bat repack the bat batteries into one in a box. Um, <clears throat> and that took time and days and still didn't get through checking. They actually flew one of their members of staff 
from China to Hong Kong to go and get them repacked a third time and through checking. Um, this was eventually, it was, it was Thursday last week. They finally went through checking Thursday last week. I went on TNT and it was like, I, they were like, they thought they'd got it sorted several times over. And so every time I get an email, uh, and it's, 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 it's China and it's China time. And I send an email and I'll get a reply the next morning. Um, so it's really slow back and forth on the message. And yeah, all the messages are like, dear friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been pace spinning them um, somewhere. They're floating around. Um, yeah, it's just, um, but yes, we got them eventually. They did eventually arrive, I think, Wednesday in London. They got stuck in... They arrived Wednesday evening in London to be picked up by, at my office, to be picked up by a friend of mine to bring them here Thursday evening to be plugged in, to be sorted out for the next morning. And we didn't actually have the chargers built for them at that point either, so that was interesting. Um, but so we, the, ba the batteries arrived on th on Thursday evening. Yeah. At this point, we still don't have the badges. Um, does your next slide talk about the what happened with the badges and the manufacturing? Yeah, the next one's ragworm. So, All right, I'll should do we do switches. that? Yeah. Um, um, oh, go on. Oh yeah, just as a thing, I haven't really touched the code and the badges since Monday afternoon when I left London. I was down there all weekend writing code because um, we got we were planning last weekend to have a big put build together in London with all of this um, to put the, we were hoping to have all the boards and the PCBs and all the batches and the screens and we're going to put them all together last weekend at London and have them all ready to before we, so we didn't have to do any of it on site so I went down to London last weekend this weekend last weekend I don't know, days have gone into blur, but yeah, basically since I left London, came up to Nottingham, grabbed my camping gear and come down to the field, I haven't really touched the badges and the code base. These guys have all put it all together and organised everything here on site because I've done all the power and the fencing. So bits of the story I'm not so clear yeah. on, all the assembly, the final stuff. So to, to cover the run up to this, um, we, when we finally decided that we were actually going to run with these things, and it was actually before I finished all the sponsorship and we decided we were just going to do it Screw it, worst case, I'm going to have to go and do something awful to earn more money. Um, and we, we got, uh, and we just decided to do it. Uh, so we, we ordered the badges, we ordered all the parts, it was all going. Um, and at this point, the amount of code we had written for this was none. Absolutely none at all, because we weren't sure until that point what platform we were writing the code for, what chip, anything. We didn't know any of it, um, because we weren't certain we didn't want to waste time. Uh, and then I think it was Bob... Was it you? I don't know. So Bob so, um, started the absolute base of this and started doing a little bit of code for it, a little bit to get it sorted. Um, Matt was too busy panicking about batteries and screens. I've written a bit but a right. while ago. He did a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we needed more people. So Marek stepped in and started just writing code. Having never, ever programmed an Arduino in his life, never <laughs> written anything for using this hardware, never really done any electronics in his life, and went from zero to all of it in about two weeks flat. Um, so any bugs are his fault. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that is absolutely not true. <laughs> Only half of them. Um, it's, uh, but he, he's, he basically took over and started writing everything. And the rest of us at this point, because this is all done by the org team, uh, Mark's been organizing all the tents. I've just done all the sponsorship, really. I shouldn't even be on stage. But um, it's... It was just Marek doing it and a couple of other people stepping in occasionally to help out. Um, and they went and got all the code written and have been going ever since, including the server side stuff. So what should be mentioned is that it's not just the badge, there's the, the radio network part of it, which totally hasn't yeah. worked, and I'm very sorry. We'll get onto this. Um, we'll we'll get onto that in a bit. It. But um, they're Raspberry Pis as well. So there's not just these, there's Raspberry Pis and stuff that needs to run on those, and server stuff as well, and a whole pile of stuff that needs to go in all the different places. Um, so that's why there's so many things that went wrong. Um, uh, what was it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ragworm, I'll skip the switches. It was another one, but ask me later. Uh, no, we'll, we'll get we'll do we'll do switches in a minute. Yeah. Um, so we we've been trying to get uh, the badges fabricated, and we needed to get the PCBs made. So you need to get the board made, and then you need to get all the components stuck onto it. Um, it's not quite stuck onto it. It's a bit more complicated than that. Um, 
And uh, we used other people in the past and uh, to have the PCBs made, and other people had assembled them. And uh, we went and spoke to them this time, and either they had no time, or they came back to us with frightening quotes that we couldn't afford, um, or they wouldn't talk to us at all. And I'm not sure what I've done to offend them, but apparently it was terrible. Um, but eventually, after talking to quite a few people, and, uh, and Ragworm appeared. I actually have no idea how that happened, but uh, we got introduced. Uh, Stacey's from Ragworm here, and, and she's sort of head of that. And they offered to manufacture all the boards, and eventually, after realizing that we couldn't get anyone to assemble them either, to assemble them as well, um, which may have been a mistake on both our parts. So, it is. Um, Classic um, Stacey. Yeah. Right. Uh, and we eventually shipped off all the components to Ragworm. And they sent, made all the boards, and the boards got made, and it's all lovely. Um, aside from the fact that the, the ink to color the boards was supposed to be bright orange and isn't, um, I've never actually find out why that is. This is a particularly Just obvious reason why. Come on, tell us some of the story. Um, well, the basic reason for the fact that they're red and not orange is a mislabeled batch of ink that arrived at our factory. Um, along with everything else that had gone wrong, obviously, on these guys' side, it meant that we had very little time to actually make bare boards and assemble. Um, in an ideal world, for a batch this size, you'd probably have two weeks assembly time, two weeks manufacture time, um, if you're pushing at it quite hard. Um, we didn't have that, um, so by the time the ink arrived, we were at solder resist stage of the process, um, and the ink arrived and had to go straight onto the boards. Um, so at that point when you open up pigment that's labelled as orange and it's red, you don't have a lot you can do about it other than put it down. Um, so that's why you have red boards, not orange. Um, <clears throat> bare board manufacture is something we do every day. That part was relatively painless. Um, the bare boards you have in front of you, um, they take around about 40 minutes a panel to bare board test. Um, and these boards go three up on a panel, so there's about 500 panels to get through. Um, so it's a relatively slow process. Um, by the time we, but we had a plan. Um, we needed, we knew we kind of wanted five days to assemble these, but we could push that down to 48 hours. Um, we have a very nice assembly machine that we label as Doris because she's a little bit old. Um, and Doris gave up and spat out a load of components and ground to a halt on the Monday before. Yeah, Monday last week. Monday last week. Um, so we was a little bit worried, um, called some engineers out onto site that were au okay with the machine and they were going to put Doris back together. Um, at this point I sort of thought, well, these guys have got enough stress going on, there's been lots of problems. We won't tell them just yet, we've got a couple of days. <laughs> 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 may, have been an error. May, may have been a slight error at that point. Um, so the engineers worked for a day, um, it was all going okay-ish, they kept promising me that Doris was, was going to come back to life. Um, <coughs> another day in and they said no she was officially dead um, so at this point I have a very embarrassing phone call to Jonty to make and um, explain that actually we no longer have a surface mount machine um, at which point Jonty I think had a mini heart attack on the other end of the phone and went very very quiet <laughs> um, but in in true fashion you don't you don't kind of leave it there and dump the problem on someone else's lap so we got on the phone um we've recently made an acquisition of a company that's gone into administration and they have a very big surface mount machine who's not quite as old unfortunately she's been decommissioned and the administrators are in charge of the factory until we sign over so i had some very nice phone calls with administrators to try and put the machine back together to which after lots of begging pleading almost crying um they agreed that i was allowed to do um, so on, on, on Friday now, I make a phone call to John T to say, I think I've got a plan. Um, John T's Thursday. still in cardiac arrest mode and not really saying a lot. <laughs> um, and so we had some people in. The person who's subsequently been made redundant from that factory actually agreed to come back in and put the machine back together. Um, it was bank holiday weekend, so we didn't hear a lot. Um, Tuesday afternoon, 11 o'clock. No, that's not going to happen. Okay, so we're now at plan Z1A. Um, and at this point, um, Connor, who works for me, sitting at the front, m possibly made around about 30 phone calls to try and beg, plead, whatever we had to do to get someone to collaborate with us to support this event. Um, lots and lots of people said no. Nobody wants to build 1,500 boards in two days, one day. Um, it's just not going to happen. There's 0402 components. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 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 lots of people don't like them. Um, <laughs> But there's a very nice company back in Nottingham, which is where the components started. Um, so these components that are on your boards have gone from Nottingham to Kent, from Kent to Bournemouth, from Bournemouth to Chichester, and then back to Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> Most of which driven in a van by one of my very nice employees who I don't think likes me anymore. 
Um, and they agreed to make your boards, which um, at this point, if you've ever assembled boards, um, there's always questions, and it's really hard to get hold of these guys in a field um, and get them to check <laughs> emails when you need an answer in about two minutes flat. Um, and suddenly, things, silly things like polarization of LEDs become really, really big deals um, because we effectively had around about 12 hours to build these boards. Um, but they made it, and the majority of you have one round your neck, um, which I'm really pleased about. Um, but yeah, please, if you're designing projects, leave time for assembly. <laughs> <laughs> So it, what, that made it sound like everything arrived all at once, <laughs> which, is, which is not true. Um, um, so on Thursday, was it Wednesday or Thursday night? I have no idea what, thurs, Thursday, Thursday night. Um, on Thursday night at about uh, 10 p.m., we were due our first shipment of boards. And at this time, they didn't have the screens on them, they didn't have the batteries on them, they didn't have the battery connectors on them, and they definitely weren't programmed. Um, so we're, we're, Stacey had arrived on site by this point. I'd been here for... A, four days and I was in no means to be dealing with couriers um, and uh, the couriers like due at 10 o'clock it's 11 o'clock and the courier's still not here it's 11.30 and the courier's still not here and I'm getting quite stressed out because there's another delivery due at 12 and we received deliveries at I think uh, half past 11, 12 o'clock 8 o'clock in the morning uh, 10, 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that was what, deliveries of the badges um, and each one of the badges had to have the screen soldered onto it it had to have the screen connected. It had to have... Also, I think one of the oh. couriers... One of the couriers was do, did about three of those deliveries. Him, in, the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, and I feel quite sorry for him. Um, it's, uh, actually, it's not as bad as... A completely random side note. There was a, a guy who delivered all the chairs here, and every single chair on site was delivered by one guy who loaded them all into his lorry by himself. And it took him six hours. We... <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. We found it out when he, 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 he was, can I have a cup of tea? I've been doing this for 12 hours. We didn't understand what would be going on. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so th these have been delivered. And at this point, Marek had been setting up the workshop tent as badge central where they were all ready to solder them. We were ready to program them going on. And they were just sat there for like six hours waiting for these to show up. And every time a shipment came in, it was a fl like a flurry of activity and they sorted them all out and, um, and passed them off to everyone else. And... I, I don't think he's really forgiven me. He broke a bit yesterday. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. Um, but the badges were still being assembled and programmed through Friday, I think. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Um, and they were all finished by about 6 p.m. Friday, but which, at which point it's a bit too late to give them out, so we decided to wait till the next day. Um, was it 10? All right. I, I can't remember anymore. <laughs> it is, um, and to be honest, I think Marek needs to tell you about what's happened since, because honestly, I don't know anymore. Um. Firmware? Firmware? Yeah, I'll take the next one. So, um, oops, sorry. Actually, I was quite happy that everything was behind schedule, because the firmware was behind schedule quite a lot. <laughs> um, so basically, when the first shipment came in, a lot of other people were helping me out and just starting to get everything going, and I was still coding. So, um, it's, it's different to like, work on Arduino Duo and like, plug everything together and that kind of works and actually have different hardware. Like, it didn't quite work. Um, so for the firmware in general, we wanted it to work with the Arduino IDE um, so everyone can get it going as easy as possible without battery low. Oh, that's it. Um, it's not just the badges. Um, so. We wanted it to be as easy as possible for people to hack on. So everything is based on the Arduino stuff. But we also wanted to use a test scheduler so was like multiple things running at once because we have a shiny new CPU that can handle lots of things at the same time and we really, really wanted that. So um, we decided to use um, FreeRTOS, which does preemptive multitasking and swaps things out and in. And it's actually quite fancy. Um, Yes. Um, turns out, um, Arduino libraries are not written for multitasking. <laughs> and no threat, safety, threat safety is really, really a thing you don't discuss in Arduino forums. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, it was all written in plain C, so the first thing was to wrap it all in C++ to, so you can actually look at it without going completely insane. Um, so after all those things came together, um, we 
it kind of looked all right. And then we got the real patches, and they kind of stopped occasionally. Um, I will go into this a bit later. Um, yeah, so we also had some games. Um, who was th doing the Tetris one? Ben, stand up. So I think this guy needs a big cheer, <laughs> because he wrote probably the most important thing on this patch. <laughs> Um, yeah. um, yeah. When we were in London at the weekend, we were writing, writing code for the, for the Arthos tasks and stuff, and I think it was Sunday night. I would got one of the Notting Hat guys had done Snake for our big train clocks, and I got him to upload that to GitHub, and Sunday night, Merrick is just like, I've had enough, I'm porting Snake. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually fun compared to the rest. <laughs> um, next slide. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> The batch would only be half as complicated um, software-wise if it wouldn't be for the fact that we wanted an up-to-date schedule on all of the batches, um, which kind of meant, given that the schedule is changing all the time and being updated, that we um, needed some way of updating it. So there's a radio on it, and we decided to build a whole infrastructure around it with Raspberry Pis and every single DK, um, with two radios on it. One of them broadcasts um, its position. The batch looks which one is the strongest signal, changes to a separate channel, and then those bad, uh, the, the gateways in those data decays um, sent out the schedule updates every 50 minutes or five minutes. Um, and that worked pretty well in, um, in London Hackspace. Turns out if you're on a field and there are lots and other um, of those things are running around and people as well, um, you kind of end up missing packets. And we have error detection, but no error correction. So I think. Who has seen an actual schedule on a, on a batch? Yeah, I can count it on two hands. <laughs> so I'm, I'm never going to design another radio protocol from scratch again, <laughs> ever. Um, um, yeah, basically covered all of this. So yeah, um, every batch has its unique ID. I think you all tried to get it, um, which was there so we could send you updates about when an event was about to happen, like talk, um, which all works fine, unless we don't actually know where you are and you turn the badge off. So I don't think we any send any out, actually. Um, but it works in theory. So if you ever replicate it at home, you might get a message. <laughs> um, so bugs. Um, there are a few bugs. You might have found them, maybe. Um, there are oh, some yeah, small issues. <laughs> yeah, display issues when you turn it around, like you change the apps when it's in the wrong direction, because we actually have an IMU in there and we try to like, do fancy things like Android phones. Yeah, it, it, it turns out that um, staying up for three weeks until 2 a.m. writing code um, is not the best time to write code that is reliable and bug-free. Um, <laughs> and as I say, oh, I don't know, the, the display issues are just crazy. And the, the maths of rotating a screen isn't that complicated. However, the screen we is a landscape screen, not a portrait screen. So everything just got confusing from that point onwards, because <laughs> up isn't up. <laughs> um, yeah, random freezing, which um, we still don't know exactly what is causing this. It might be like a loss of different problems. Um, it might be due to the fact that thread safety is not a thing in some of those libraries, and we're actually doing multi-threading. Um, yeah, people don't actually receive schedules on weather information just because a single drop packet in a, in a message means we're just throwing it away. Um, oh yeah, we're also um, signing everything with um, um, elastic curves, so just to make sure no one is sending fake stuff to all the badges, which turned out to take quite a lot of time and made the packages even longer. Um, in the end, we shouldn't have bothered because no one actually received it, but <laughs> the thought was there. <laughs> Um, I heard stories of one battery controller exploding. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> um, of course, it never happened. And my favorite um, bug is um, uh, when Coffee was writing the weather app, he was um, translating day of week into strings and started with zero being Sunday. Um, but in reality, it was starting with one being Monday, which works fine, um, apart from Sunday. And in his big case statement, um, he defaulted to Funday, 
when it wasn't matching any of this. So it actually turned out that Sunday turned into Fun Day, which is not too bad, all things considered. Um, yeah, is there any more for me? No, I think. Uh, yeah, who wants? To <laughs> yeah, I'll take this. Just right. Hang on to that, and we'll see. Yes, we. So our initial planning meeting at the week before in Wave at Megafest a year ago. There's a list of ideas and notes and it's on the wiki somewhere go and find it there's a huge list of things that we wanted to do and the core things was the the the, the schedules and the notifications and torch and the arduino compatibility so that hopefully you can all take these away and hack them and do projects and stuff with them they will take arduino shields just solder the headers on the back and you know loads of stuff with them um but yes to get all this stuff talking with each other you've got screens you've got motion motion processing radios um, all the uh, um, yeah, LED sounds. Um, you really need this multitasking, the free RTOS, to be able to run all these load codes and in and out together. And it's just there's an awful lot of code there. We split it all up um, and still didn't get it all done. Um, so yeah, multitasking is hard. And trying to write a GUI on a very tiny screen, the font, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff is being displayed in in landscape because the screen's just not big enough. Um, I can't get the resolution. Um. Also, somehow, none of us had a JTAG programmer, so we couldn't do any proper debugging. Yeah. It's been ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a camp of a thousand hackers, and we can't find a JTAG anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any of you used Arduinos or know about JTAGs, but yeah, like Arduino ID, you just use the serial output for your debugging because there's no JTAG on those processes on the lower stuff, and it's like, yeah. We basically had to do that with a high-end processor where really you should just be using a JTAG and you should go and see and go, oh, that's why it's crashed. <laughs> um, go on. Sorry, um, one last note. Um, I would really, really love if you all take the batch home and look into it and just add things to it, send us pull requests, get going. Um, and we're hoping we can use yeah. something similar if there will be a patch in two years um, as a basis and we can get going from there. Yeah, sorry, we're not doing 20... No, we are doing 2016. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so the, part of this is my fault in that I was the one that said we should do the schedule thing. Um, and that was his core requirement. Was the yeah, core requirement, so it's all my fault. Um, and I'm still glad that we aimed high, but the point of the badges was that they do something fun during the event, but the main aim is that you take them home and you do something fun with them. And there's workshops that you can go and play with them as well. And that the point is to give you something you ha may not have had before, you might not have had a chance to play with, um, something to remember the event by and, and, and use. Um, and as part of that, when we've done this for every event we've done, but the one thing that we keep meaning to do, and I keep forgetting to announce, and this has happened twice now, but I'm going to remember to do it now, is that we're running a competition. And the competition is for the best use of the badge. And the best use of the badge wins two free tickets to the next EMF. Um, so it is worth doing. It might not take that long, but build it into a giant robot, connect it to your microwave. I don't know, something interesting. Um, but they are just standard Arduinos if you want to use it like that. But these guys have written a vast amount of code for this uh, for the free Artos stuff. Um, and aside from a couple of issues, it is actually a really good code base to work with. Um, it's it, it's quite pleasurable and it's worth having a look at before you just go and blat the entire thing. Um, but if you would like some free tickets to the next event, in fact, actually, I've just made a decision right now, um, you can <laughs> have free tickets to the next one-day event and the next DMF. Um, so if worth even more if you like it. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> um, and secondly for these, we have more badges than we needed. And that was intentional because obviously there's a failure rate when we manufacture these. And I think, how many did, did we actually get out of the manufacturing in the end? Yeah. So we, we got 1,456 boards made of the, of the 1,500 we actually wanted to make. And of that, of course, there's some more failures we need to fix. And people have been quite happily handing them in all weekend for us to fix. And we really thank you for the fact that we've got to do a lot of soldering now. Um, <laughs> but all the ones that we have left are for sale. Um, so if you would like another badge to play with, and I highly recommend getting one because the hardware on these badges is worth quite a lot of money. And if you were going to go and build these yourselves, you, it would cost you a lot of money. And a lot um, of time. Pardon? And a lot of time. And a lot of time. Um, built, um, but even just buying all the components themselves is, is remarkably expensive. Um, I don't know exactly what the price is. I haven't, I don't, I don't, I haven't been informed. But uh, 
they were going to be for sale from the info tent, but because we've got to fix so many of them, it might have to be we'll post them out to you. But if you go to the info tent later on today, um, they will write down your name and take your details, and um, we will bill you somehow or other. I don't know how that's been decided. Somebody did that work. I think someone's probably giving me the evil eye from the back of the tent now. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, um, anyway, uh, do we have anything else? Oh, how much? I, I just what I said. I'm not exactly sure. It will probably be. Um, I would imagine probably 40 quid because the components themselves are worth 30. Um, and that money is actually necessary for us because we need some of that to cover the, the badge cost in the first place. How much um, is an Arduino GA? An Arduino GA itself is 30. 30 quid on its own. So, uh, it's the, yeah, then you've got, yeah, uh, there's actually some components on this that never got turned on. Um, yeah, there's, there's a speaker on it, um, which you haven't heard. Um, <laughs> There is, uh, oh yeah, I, the, my favorite thing, I insisted on this and I never told anyone, which is great. Um, right next to the lanyard holes, there's, there's two little, there's two holes either side and they're for conductive threads so you can sew things into your lanyard um, if you wanted to sew in LEDs or something and control them with a the badge. But uh, Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's, all, it's all documented, it's just we forgot to tell everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, there's an infrared transmitter on it. Um, uh, oh yeah, and there's Ethernet on board, so if you want to connect it to the internet, you, can, you just need a very small adapter to be able to connect to the internet. Um, and what else is there? Oh yeah, there's, 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 there's sections to solder on, uh, an SD card adapter, um, infrared receiver, and a magnetometer, which is a compass, uh, and a few other bits as well. Pardon? And Ethernet, yeah, I, I said Ethernet though. Did I, I did, I'm not imagining things, am I? <laughs> I've been awake a really long time. <laughs> so the ink screen has a lot of support circuitry with it and Matt really wanted to leave it on but I made him take it off because it cost too much money um, so you can blame me for that as well um, uh, the, I don't know how easy it would be to add them back on yeah not easy the, the ink screen is one cost and then there's another sort of like two pounds worth of parts um, uh, that's two pounds worth of small, parts that's not two tiny, pounds tiny, worth tiny, of the board tiny, yeah, it, tiny parts um, you can, it's quite Lines. We might be able to do it on us. Could we make the remaining ones? Basically, the more awkward yeah, than it would yeah, yeah. be. Yeah. Um, um, but all of the design, the software, the, the, the firmware on the badge, the software on the uh, DKs, the design is all on GitHub. So it's all if open source you, as well. Sorry? It's all under open source license. It, and it's all under an open source license. So if you want to download the design and get some made, uh, you welcome to do that. Yeah, I'd like to know if anyone does try that. Um, the prototypes I've built, um, about nine of these prototypes up by hand with a pair of tweezers. They take about two hours each. So yeah, if anyone else builds one by hand, I'd let me know. <laughs> Don't build one by hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and also, uh, there'll be more information coming on the wiki once we've covered about yeah. the we, we've had a few people asking um, for more information about it, and there's a URL on the back of the badge so that we'll be working with more information later. Um, but because all of this got pushed so late, we've all been so pressed, and because pretty much all the team have been involved in running the rest of the event, and obviously having tents to sit under is more important than shiny badges around your neck. Um, <laughs> they, they, they haven't had time to update the documentation and things. We're very sorry about that. We, we wanted it there, but <laughs> time constraints. Uh, most of it is on the wiki, yes, but you, you know what wikis are like. They're impossible to read, so it's, it's fine. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, we'll go through the what next, I think. Oh, sorry, one more slide? or No. I'm oh, oh yeah. Go oh, um, so, yes, we're going to... The badge team will hopefully aim to produce a badge for every event that John T agrees to run. Um, so, yeah, hopefully there'll be a one-day event next year. We're going to do a smaller badge like that. I don't know if any of you were at Wave and saw the sign badge for the treasure hunt. One of the things we wanted to do with this is have this badge reprogram that badge so that they would interact with each other, but time, hardware, and all the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> but yes, next year we'll do another small badge that hopefully will talk to this badge. Um, and we're going to keep this badge. You all heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is in charge of the next badge for the one day event. <laughs> I've already got the initial designs. We're pretty close already. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. I, we actually missed that. Easy. 
At um, one point, when we, 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 the money was really, really, really a problem, and I was really not happy, um, we did actually do a complete redesign from scratch, which Bob did in a weekend, um, which was the potential replacement for this. Um, tangent. Which I believe is what the badge will be next time. So you heard it here first. We've got a year to get it done. Um, <laughs> But obviously, we'll do it in the week before instead, because it's much more fun. <laughs> we built the last badge in the week before. Yeah. Wave, Wave, Wave was actually built. I didn't talk about Wave when I was... But it was, that was built in the week before, between the Maker Fair and the Wave event. I built all those badges at work, all the little signs, um, in literally the week before. So that was done just in time. But we did do the entire event from start to finish in three months. So you know, that, that's kind of allowed with the compressed time. <laughs> Um, um, we, we will be doing another badge in 2016. I think we probably will stick with the same software, but not so buggy um, and somewhat yeah, similar gonna, hardware. I don't really know. Yeah, we're going to run through with some similar hardware. It may even be the same badge. It might mm. be the e-paper one. If Johnny can it's not going to be the e-paper one. <laughs> 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 so, I'm being quite clear about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to run the code base through. So hopefully we're going to just build on what we've done this year. Um, I also want to do... Um, I'm going to spend some time at some point and make um, a tilde-shaped prototype shield to go on it, which will be really good. And we'll hopefully get Ragworm to make some of those up and people will be able to buy it. <laughs> you heard that here first as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are there any questions? So this is the wireless mic, so we'll have to pass it out to the audience so people can hear. Or we can repeat questions back if you're far away. I don't really mind. Um, go on, there's an arm up there. You'll have to shout. Uh, yeah, the radios can transmit and receive. They're, um, and actually, the radio is reprogrammable as well. It's, it's, the Susiko radios are standard TI 2200s. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. CC 1110, yeah. Yeah, um, but if you get two badges, you can talk to each other. You can get USB versions of the radios that you can plug in as well. Um, so if you wanted to, say, connect this to your central heating and then control it from something else, which someone actually did with uh, the badge from 2012, someone has that running their central heating system. And frankly, I think that's quite a ballsy move. Um, it's a <laughs> Yeah. Um, then, yeah, you, you can get the pieces. If you talk to Matt afterwards or look at Sissico, they're linked from the wiki page. You can buy all the radios there. Um, there's also a Raspberry Pi, Pi shield, so you can connect that to it and talk to the badge from it and all sorts of things. Um, but if you wanted to run your own firmware on it, there's programming pins somewhere on the back of it um, that are hidden. Oh, and there's something else we've got to announce. Um, uh, no, 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 no. The, 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 there are hidden things on the badge. There are quite a lot of hidden things. But you found one. You've got achievement one. Yeah, that's because you're assembling them, right? <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there, are, there are three things to unlock on the board. And if you find out all three, what all three are and you email us, um, we'll probably do a free ticket for that as well, just because it's, really, it's going to take a lot of effort and probably completely destroying the badge. <laughs> so it's... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we should thank Jake. Jake did the artwork for... Um, oh, yes. For uh, tiny films. round of applause for Jake, who stepped in at the very last minute. Too much applause, too much. <laughs> uh, he stepped in and did all the artwork for it because we're not designers and uh, he made it look good. Um, uh, and is there anything else we need to talk about? I also like the fact that we, before the event, we had a, we had a, a, a product uh, case. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Somebody yeah. yeah. Is, is it you that designed it? Uh, all right. So somebody dropped into our IRC channel and designed a 3D printed case for it, um, <laughs> which is really nice. Yeah. But... He's not getting this back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but we weren't really expecting that. Um, I think there's already a laser cut case floating around. And as a laser well. cut one as well. Um, anything else? Yeah, any more questions? Right, any other questions from anyone? Oh, go on. Please, next time, can you give us some mountain holes? Uh, you got the lanyard holes. You got the lanyard holes. That's what they're for. Yeah. I haven't got room for the mountain holes. Fair enough. <laughs> Yes, yeah. that, so that, that was, was just that we, we, we have data sheets me. for every component on there. Every single one is in our GitHub repo. The whole thing is completely documented because after the event, we, we're going to get really sick of it for like six months and you're still going to want to work <laughs> on it. So, um, yeah. Uh, and I think we are done now. So if you've got any other, any other questions, find these guys in the bar, buy them a drink, and they might tell you some of the horror stories we didn't say on stage. <laughs> <laughs>